Hey, today on that Kelty Guy videos, we're gonna fix this water damage ceiling for you like I mentioned in my community tab. So if you've ever had water damaged ceiling that caused the tape to come loose and such, I'm gonna show you how to fix that next. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel here at That Kilted Guy Videos. And if you're into doing your own home improvement projects, such as drywall repairs and other things, and you want to learn how to do it right, be sure and click on that subscribe button wherever it appears down there below the video. And if you want to be notified each time a video comes out, click on that little bell icon. That way YouTube will notify you each time we put a video out. Because if you don't click the bell icon, you actually don't get not notified. You're just subscribed to us. Again, welcome to my channel. My name is Guy Persella. I am a 35-year professional in the construction industry, having owned my own business of Mr. Patch Drywall for the last 15 years. I've specialized in repairing drywall, so I've done thousands of repairs like this. And after 35 years, it's my goal to pass on my knowledge to you guys so that you guys can do some of this. I know you're going to try it, so you might as well get the right instruction and learn how to do it right. In part one, I showed you how to do the prep work on this ceiling repair, including the scraping and then adding more screws where it's needed. And I explained why. And then I showed you how to mesh tape it and get it ready for embedding then I showed you how to embed it with the first coat of mud, which is the taping coat. And now we're ready to move on to the first full coat and beyond. Okay, I gave this about probably 10 or 15 minutes. Now we're ready. You can see it's all set up. It's plenty firm. You don't have to sand this, it's wet. If you try and sand this, you're, you're gonna clog up your paper although it usually dries faster on the outside edge, so you could. But for the second coat, you don't need to. So what we want to do is remove lap marks. And I'll show you a picture that's exaggerated of lap marks, but that's where I stop my knife and lift off. It'll leave lap marks. Those kind of stick down. So what you do, you stand your knife up like this and just scrape across it. And see if you can see it in the video there. may be hard to see but scraping across just shaves off those high points and you can keep doing that and it doesn't damage back here if it does you probably need to let it set up a little longer so we'll just go over this scrape off all the high spots and if you've got any goobers on the outside edge go ahead and get those Okay, if you're gonna work with these wider knives, I suggest you go watch my other video called The Best Mudding Tip Ever. I'll put a thumbnail up here and that changes once in a while, but it's gonna help you if you're trying to learn how to spread mud like this. I'm using a 14 inch knife so that I go a little bit wider each time. All right, that's good enough for this coat. I better go hurry up and get this out of my pan because it's already thickening up on me. Okay, let me talk a little bit about the right way to float out a drywall repair. Some of you may not understand why I'm going wide here. So in this illustration, this just shows you how you need to coat it wide to give it a gentle sloping hump. 
Now in this illustration of the wrong way to coat it, you can see I'm illustrating like you're using a six inch knife and it creates a very abrupt hump basically. So that sharpness of the hump creates a sharper shadow and the shadow is what gives away the repair. And then you need to sand it a little bit and you're just trying to thin it down very slightly right here like on the joint tape. You see how it got a little bit thinner and you want to feather those edges out. And now you've got a nice gentle taper compared to a narrow abrupt taper. So that's what will make your repair look much better. So here you can just compare the two side by side on the top with a wide coat after sanding and on the bottom with a narrow coat. Okay, now I've let this ceiling dry overnight. Well, actually I lie, I let it dry a month. It's been a month since I started this and then I just couldn't get back to it. I had a lot of other things to do, so it's plenty dry. So now I'm gonna take you to the next step. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And then I'm gonna show you the next step is basically to sand it, touch it up, which means fix any remaining minor defects and then texture it. Okay, to finish off what we're gonna do today, we need a few tools. One would be, we need a sander. So we're gonna use this WEN sander. I usually use my Porter cable, but this was out in my uh, video studio out here. It's closer, so we're gonna use it. We're gonna find out if we can sand all that drywall mud in this room without enclosing everything and trapping all the dust like I normally would. Now this is my home, so I can experiment I wouldn't do this on a customer's home. I know this thing will trap most of the dust, but some might get away and then we'll have some edges that we got to sand. And for that, we'll use a sanding sponge. Sanding sponge is the only thing that will sand those edges down to a nice feather edge. And because this isn't attached to a vacuum, we're going to get a little bit of dust, but I'm going to put a vacuum up there to it as I sand. That'll trap a lot of it. So I, I think we're going to get by with out having to mask off this whole room and cover everything up. Now you might ask, why don't I wet sand? Well, I actually have done a lot of wet sanding and this is a special sponge they sell at the drywall supply made especially for wet sanding drywall. I personally don't like it if the edge has got any thickness at all. So if you leave an edge with much thickness, and you wet sand it, it tends to round it over like this because sponges just tend to follow the contour of the mud too much and it will soften the edge, but you don't get a feathered edge. Now the difference is right here in this illustration, you can see if we wet sand it, we often get a rounded edge like this, whereas if we dry sand it, we'll get a feathered edge. We're looking to feather that edge out because if it goes over and just rolls off like that, you're gonna see it. It's got a lot more chance of showing through even with this heavier knockdown texture. So if you use one of these sanding sponges, you can see that they, they have some rigidity to them because of the way they're made. This part is actually a fairly dense foam, so it tends to flatten out humps. Let's say that was a hump. It will ride right on top of there and flatten that out so you can get that feather. Whereas if you take a soft sponge and you try and do that, it tends to contour to the shape of it. My knuckle goes right up in there and it really won't go up inside of this. So these work a lot better for edges. Then after we get through, we're going to texture it without a spray texture machine. I normally recommend that. I think it does a lot better job, but because we're in a rental, I'm going to experiment. So even if it doesn't come out the greatest, she'll be happy because I'm not charging her. Now you can buy these on Amazon. I'll put a link to it down below. They're smaller 
but if you want to save i think it's 20 bucks to buy one if you want to save some money you can buy one of these for about a dollar two dollars and make one i have a video about that okay so you can see our repair here you can see the yellow mud all around here it's all dry when it dries it dries to this yellowish white color you saw before it was a dark yellow like this and now it's this nice white or whiter yellow color if you see any of the darker yellow that means it's still wet now if you want to rush this a little bit we use top mud partly to better rush it get in on it quicker another way is higher heat and more air movement so if you put a fan on it it's going to dry a lot faster the more air it moves the faster it's going to dry and if you open up some windows and let the humidity out it will dry even faster but now when you really want to see the defects if you're having a hard time here's what you can do get you a bright light like i've got this flashlight here shine it across the surface and the flatter you get it right here you can see even the humps in the ceiling that's kind of looks like i didn't do a good job but this whole ceiling is wavy like this that happens a lot especially when houses are built with artificial heat and the spacing's too wide and the sheetrock's half inch and it's there if you can't see it it's not real important so most of the time this doesn't show but as soon as you light it like this it makes every defect in this ceiling show terrible but we're just looking to see how bad it is right now okay so now let's go ahead and sand this with this drywall sander hey to minimize the dust when you're using one of these first turn your vacuum cleaner on then hold the sander against the wall or ceiling and then turn it on. Keep firm pressure. Every time you ease up on the pressure too much, it'll shoot dust out. And when you're done, you wanna turn the switch off while it's still moving and then pull it away from the ceiling once it's stopped. Okay, you can see it's still got that wavy spot there once this is all done that won't be seen if you really wanted to level all of that out you could skim coat this with a pretty heavy skim coat and then use a skim coat blade which you can get like in two foot lengths and three foot lengths you run that over it and it would level it out I'll put a link to one of those in the description down below okay now there's some edges right along here that i'm talking about and if you look closely in this picture you'll see that the edge is basically straight it's too straight if you texture over that it'll come through and anything that straight is going to give away that it was a repair so we've got to feather that out so you want to do that with a dry sanding sponge and notice how i'm tilting the sponge you want to tilt it so that you're putting most of the pressure on the mud, but it's at an angle, and that gives you that tapered effect without gouging it. Okay, we got that done. But now if you look in this picture, I'm going to show you right here, you'll see that these edges here still have a little bit of straightness because it's hard to get it to go down into the texture, into the voids of the texture. This is where a wet sanding sponge can work. You just go around and real quickly don't spend much time at all on it or you'll end up messing up something this way because it wet sands really fast now you can see it softened up those edges thoroughly actually now we're ready to touch it up so this is where we look for the tiny little defects and if you see any that's big enough, this is where you'd go ahead and fix it. Right here's a pretty good sized little pinhole. Wouldn't hurt to fix that. Wipe it tight. Some more pinholes. If you have any edges that you couldn't sand out or any other defects, you can usually fix it with just your six inch knife and a tight touch up coat. Now, if you get many pinholes, bubbles where it came through, that's usually because you went over this painted surface. Anytime you put mud over the painted surface, 
it'll often bubble because the moisture has nowhere to go. When you put mud over a regular raw drywall, it kind of absorbs the moisture into the surface. When it can't do that, it bubbles as it gets the moisture out. And if you have those, you just fix it like this. Sometime it'll still come back out. So just keep doing that. Sometime it pays to go the opposite direction. And once it fills those little bubbles in, you're all done. Okay, now we're ready to get out our texture sponge and texture this thing. But you know what? I have a Patreon channel, and that's where some of you guys go to support our channel, help us put out more videos. And one of the things I promise over there is that you'll get early release videos and information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to texture this whole section here with this texture sponge. And I'm going to release this immediately on Patreon, but I'm going to have to wait about three weeks or so, and then I'll release it as part two here on YouTube. So if you want to see it right away, be sure and check out the link for our Patreon page down below. You can join over there for as little as, I think, $3. I've got it set up. You can sign up over there and see how we're going to texture this early. But for those of you that watch this, I'm going to put some videos, see them popping up right there and one right there. Those are some other videos you might find helpful. And if you enjoy learning this kind of stuff, be sure and subscribe and click the bell icon because we're going to put this stuff out regularly to teach you how to do it right. Thanks a lot and I'll see you on the next video.